And it's our prayer that we can be a blessing back. Hallelujah. Well, how many have their Bibles with them today? You have your Bible with you today? Amen. Hold up your Bible real big. You got your Bible there. Glory to God. Look at all those Bibles in the house of the Lord today. God bless you. Amen. I appreciate the Bible. Amen. I know that we are in a day of technology and we don't need to bring the Bible because we have app, Bible apps and we have Bible on our phones and all those sorts of things. And that, that's good. I, I don't I don't have to down that at all. But me, I, I'm old school. Amen. As you can see, I'm up here in a coat and a tie. I don't always do this, you guys. I take a picture. Put on Facebook. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, hey, our, pastor, our pastor's all dressed up. We, we made it a quote out of our brother Chad. I guess brother Chad said pastor was all dressed up on Sunday. Amen. Uh, but I am old school. Hallelujah. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be old school. Amen. You know, the old school, uh, the, the old school is cool. Hey, somebody has to say it, or never get said. Amen. The old, the old school is cool. Amen. We've got something to say. Amen. And what we've got to say is, is that God is good all the time. Amen. 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 David got older in his life and experience with the Lord, and David had this testimony. He said, I once was old, I once was young, and now I am old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. Amen. That's, that's a good word right there for you this morning. If you're struggling a little bit, you're young in your, uh, you're young in your experiences with God, I'm here to tell you today that God is faithful. He'll see you through every single time if you just hold on and continue to believe. Don't be distracted and begin looking at circumstances. Just keep looking to the Lord. He's always there. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He will never leave you or forsake you and he is a way maker. Even when there seems to be no way, our God is a way maker. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Our God is a way maker to God. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. And He never fails. There's times in my life when I felt like He might be a little bit late. But He always shows up on time. He's never late. Amen. He always provides what we need. And I've come this morning to just minister on that thought of this morning that our God is faithful. He's faithful. That is one of the names of God. It is His name is faithful. John the Revelator. John the Apostle. John the Beloved. The one who was always next to Jesus in His earthly ministry. The one who laid next to Him. Sat next to Him when He ate. John. Amen. The John. Amen. One. Who he described Himself the one that Jesus loved. John uh, was exiled into an island, an island called Patmos because of his testimony for Jesus Christ. And John, uh, you know, they tried to kill him, but he wouldn't die. They tried to boil him in oil, but he wouldn't boil. So they said, we need to get him out of the way, just put him on an island all by himself. And uh, he got there before Gilligan did. <laughs> Some of you too young to know what I'm talking about. One of our elders needs to explain that to you after church. Uh, but but uh, he got on an island called Patmos, and the Bible says that he was in the spirit on the Lord's Day. I like that. The Lord's Day is the first day of the week. It's called the Lord's Day because it was the first day of the week. It was the day that Jesus got up from, amen, from wherever he was at. Some day he was in the tomb. I don't, I'm not so sure if he was just getting back from being in hell and preaching to the captives. But one way or another, he came up out of that place. And the Bible says that it was on the first day of the week, being Sunday, it was the Lord's Day. Today is the Lord's Day, but I like that in the book of Revelation. Uh, he begins to share his testimony. I'm not preaching, I'm just talking right now. So, so I, I'll let you out early enough to get uh, real close to the front of the line and talk to Bill, okay? So just pray for me. I'm rambling a little bit, but I've got somewhere to go today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and it says that John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to know today, are you in the spirit on the Lord's day? Amen. Did you come with Jesus already with you? And ready to receive what God has for you? John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to reveal himself to John in many different ways. And this really come fits nicely into the topic, into the theme that we've been bringing to the church on how God reveals himself to us. 
God reveals himself to us as faithful. Let me try that over here. God reveals himself to us as faithful. Amen. Amen. It sounds like they were a little bit more ready. I gave them a primer though. God reveals himself as faithful. There we go. Amen. I, I might as well give the middle group here a chance too. God reveals himself as faithful. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And, and John was on the Isle of Patmos and he was in the spirit of the Lord's day. And the Lord began to show him all kinds of great revelation of who he was and what his intention was and how one day he's going to even set up a kingdom that will never end. Hallelujah. Yeah. The kingdom of God. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. kingdom when, when he's actually back here with us. Hallelujah. But it says that John saw the heavens open and there was one on a white horse whose name was Faithful. And true. Now he had other identifying marks there as well, but I'm going to stop there for emphasis because my message to you today that I want you to grab a hold of and just 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 get deep into your spirit is that God is faithful. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to minister to you the truth, Amen, of how God reveals Himself to us. God reveals Himself to us in many different ways. Because he is not uh, monolithic in the way that he approaches his people. He's not monolithic in the way he reveals himself. We see from the very word of God that there's many different ways that God reveals himself to us. And he will reveal himself to us in the way that he needs or in the way that we need him to reveal himself to us. When I need peace, he will reveal himself to me as the prince of peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you need peace today in your soul? Yeah. Are you troubled? Yeah. Are you worried? Are you stressed out? Are you confused? You might need the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace to come down today and fill you with peace. Not any peace. Not just peace. But it's a peace that the world cannot give. And it's a peace that the world cannot take away. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I give to you. The world cannot give it, and the world cannot take it away. I just want someone to know today, if you're troubled, if you feel a little anxiety moving in your soul today, you need to kick the devil off your back right now. The devil, you have no reason and right to be harassing my mind and my soul today, because I have the Prince of Peace living inside of me. I wish someone would wake up and right there and know what I'm talking about today. Amen. He gives us peace that the world cannot give, but better than that, the world cannot take it away. So the world's trying to trip you up and trick you and get you all upset. Just turn to the world's circumstances and trials and say, no, devil, not today, not now, and not ever. In the way that we need him to reveal himself to us. He reveals himself in many different ways. But one way is a constant in my life. As I am now 65 years old, I've, I've reached the middle of middle age. <laughs> Someone laughed over there. Jay I don't know who it was, but it sounded like, yeah. <laughs> you never know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing I can tell you for sure, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, God is faithful. Amen. Amen. When John said, I saw him and his name is called faithful and true, I say amen. God is faithful and true. Hallelujah. If you're struggling this morning, just hold on. Because God's not finished yet. Amen. He will turn your beauty, he will turn your ashes to beauty. I just can't open up my text yet. You have to keep praying for me. I haven't started preaching yet. I told you I was going to get you out early enough to get the front end of the line, didn't I? The prophet said he will give you beauty for ashes. He will give you beauty for ashes. 
The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I can't tell you how many stressed out, over anxious, uh, anxiety filled people that I run into today like never before. I've got an inclination why, but I, that's not my message for today. I simply want to say if you're over anxious and feel full of anxiety or stress in your life, you need to shake that stuff off. Because that's not God for your life. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 He said that He will give us the garment of praise for the Spirit of heaven. I just feel like someone needs to jump up right now and just shake their hands and shake loose of that thing that's trying. Amen. The chains have already been broken. You just need to shake them off. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you open your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 22. You can go there on your iPhone and your Bible app as well. I don't mind that as long as I don't find you going over to Facebook and checking out if someone likes something that you had to say. Amen. There's another time for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't get an amen or a hallelujah, so I just amen all by myself, I guess. <laughs> uh, but Genesis chapter 22, we're also going to give you, um, we're also going to give it to you on the, on the overhead screen today so that uh, you can keep up with us. Amen. But I, want, I just want to present to you today the reality of God, that He is faithful. Amen. Some of you are newer in the Lord that are sitting under the sound of my voice today, and you've already seen the faithfulness of God. He's given you peace in the midst of your trouble. He's opened up the door and given you a job when you needed work. He touched your body and healed you when you felt sick. Is there somebody in the house today that can lift their hands and say, that's me, Pastor? You were looking for a house, and God made a way for you to have a home. Amen. Are you here in this place today? Amen. That's what I'm talking about. When I talk about the faithfulness of God, we have Bible examples that God gives us as we can walk along our path of faith and see what God is doing in their lives. But before we even get into that, I need to bring it down to the reality of the now. Say now. Now. Say right now. Right now. The reality of right now is that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And if God was faithful to Abraham, God would be faithful to you. Amen. If God was faithful to David, God would be faithful to you. Amen. If God was faithful to anybody, God will be faithful to you. Yes. Amen. In Genesis chapter 22, we come across the story of a test of a faithful man of God. When we begin to look at Abraham, we need to understand this morning that Abraham stands out as a giant figure of an example for us of a man of faith. Amen. As a matter of fact, a day of, of all of the Old Testament characters of the Bible, Abraham is probably the most significant. And we have some big ones. We have Moses. And we have Elijah. And we have all of these great patriarchs of the Old Testament. We have Jacob and all of those. But, but Abraham is cited and, and given the credit of being the father of faith. Come on, somebody. Amen. Without faith, the Hebrew writer says, is it impossible to please God? For those that come to God must believe that He is, that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Yeah, Abraham is a giant example for each and every one of us as a man of faith. The Bible tells us of the call of Abraham to leave his country, to leave his family, to leave his possessions, to leave those things that were familiar in his life, and to go into a land that God would show him. Abraham identifies with us in many different ways. One of the things that we can identify with Abraham was he didn't know where he was going. Amen. Brother over here caught that. The rest of you guys, 
let me say it again. He didn't realize where he was going. In other words, there's times when confusion comes in our life. There's times when we might have doubt about where we're at and how we got there. But he walked it out by faith. The scripture says that Abraham didn't stagger at the promises of God. He was walking the thing out by faith because you're the voice of God said, Abraham, go into a land that I'm going to show you. And he walked it out by faith. It wasn't by what he saw. It wasn't by what he anticipated. He was just walking. Sometimes he saw nothing but sand and stars. Hello, somebody. Amen. But he heard the voice of God say, just keep going. That's a good word right there. I can stop right there and dismiss you right now. That's a word from God for you Amen. today. Amen. Just keep going Amen. with God. Amen. Amen. So Abraham is walking things out. He has his wife Sarah and God has blessed him because of his response of faith, responding to the call of God by saying yes. When God calls you, just say yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 You don't have to have it all figured out. That's right. Abraham didn't have it all figured out. It wasn't all lined up. God called and Abraham said yes. And he just started walking with the Lord. Going to the country. As he had been directed, God was directing his steps to a land that he didn't know. To a city that had not yet been built. But in his heart, he knew he heard the voice of God and said yes. And he just kept walking the thing out. Abraham, for 25 years, had been blessed by God because of his walk with God. If you walk with God, God will bless you. Amen. Abraham is an example of that. He walked with God and God blessed him. His herds grew. His servants grew. His possessions grew. His notoriety grew. His fame grew. Everything was enlarged in blessing because he walked with God. And 25 years later, Abraham has a question for God. He has a hope in his heart. and He has a, a feeling of being let down. He, feel, he, has a feel, he has an experience where it's like, why am I here? What's going to happen now? Abraham now is 100 years old. Pretty good life. 100 years old. And, he, and, and he's questioning God. He has all of these great things happening in his life. But Sarah did not bear a son. Sarah was childless. But God is faithful. And he begins to call to the Lord and say, God, you've given me great possessions. Lord, you've enlarged my influence. God, you've done these wonderful things in my life. Lord, you've preserved me all of my days. I have all of this blessing in my life. But God, I have no heir for my life. Am I going to transfer all of this blessing over to my servant who is not an heir? And God calls Abraham again and says, Abraham, come out of your tent. Come here and let me talk to you. Let me remind you of how great and faithful I am. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes as we walk out our walk of faith, God needs to come down, call our name, and remind us how great and faithful He is. We start looking to the right, and we start looking to the left. We start wondering, why are all of these things going on? God, I'm at this point in my life where I just don't know. Do I have a witness in the house? I just don't know, Lord. I don't know. What's going to happen next? 
And he says, Abraham, come out of your tent and look up. Turn to your neighbor. Nudge him a little bit. Come on. Come on. Nudge him a little bit. Say, look up. That's a good word. Look up. Amen. Why? Because it's from the Lord that we get our help. He said, Abraham, come out of your tent and look up. Abraham comes out of his tent, he looks up. It's a clear night sky, and there are stars galore. That's the best way I can explain it. It's an unnumerable amount of stars. And the question God has for Abraham in answering his question, Lord, who is my heir going to be? God comes and visits Abraham and says, Abraham, look up. Wow. That's powerful, you guys. I'm feeling this today. I hope you are feeling what I'm feeling. If not, amen. I hope you do before you leave this church. So powerful. Abraham comes out of his tent. He looks up. And he hears the voice of God. He says, Abraham, can you count the stars? Because your inheritance, your heritage will be as great as that. I'm going to give you a vision that will pass your momentarily a disappointment. And that's God. God wants you to always look forward and not get stuck in where you are for the moment. Because where you are for the moment is not where God is taking you to. God is taking you past your moment into your destiny. Into your blessing. Into your promise. Into the good things that God has ordered for your life. Don't get stuck. Keep moving forward. And look up, because God will be faithful to you. Hallelujah. Abraham looked up and he said, Abraham, as the stars of the sky, so shall your heritage be. And just so you know that I'm faithful, about a year from this time, your wife Sarah is going to have a son. Amen. Hallelujah. It's inconceivable. That's a good word right there. It's unimaginable. Are you kidding me? Sarah is thinking in her tent. She hears the voice of God. And the Bible says she laughs. At the prospect, the idea, the suggestion by God. Don't laugh at God. Laugh with God, but don't laugh at God. Because God, amen, when he says he's going to do something, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Abraham laughed in her tent. And God said, Abraham said, why did your wife Sarah laugh? She didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. Yet you indeed did laugh. And we know how the story goes. Sarah conceives at 75 years old. Abraham is 100 years old. And they break forth the promise. And they name him Isaac. Because Isaac means laughter. And I declare to you today that God wants to take your disappointment. He wants to take your question and doubt. He wants to take your situation and problem that you have in your approach to God. He wants to call you out of that place of confinement in your tent. And ask you to look up. And he wants to fill your heart with laughter today. Yes. He wants to fill your soul with joy this morning. He wants to put a spring in your step and hope in your heart because God is faithful. Yes. Can someone give the Lord a hand of praise right there? Yes. Should we read some scripture this morning? Yes. So in all of the joy, all of the blessing. Abraham has a son. He's the son of promise. He's the son of inheritance. He's the son of establishing something great, not only for his family, but for the world. The blessing and the promise wasn't just for Abraham and his tribe and his kinsmen, but the blessing of God is for us all. The Abrahamic covenant, the Abrahamic blessing, the Abrahamic promise transcends the moment into today. Wow. Because 
God said, For in you, Abraham, shall all the nations of the world be blessed. It's out of the seed of Abraham. It's out of the heritage, out of the lineage of Abraham, that Jesus is born. Amen. Who becomes the Savior of the world. Amen. That's here right now by faith. The fear of the day without it can fill your life up with joy and speed and full of glory and put a laugh into your heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this point in time, a little bit of time has transpired. We're only two chapters removed from the great promise and birth of Isaac. But we're 12 years later at least, maybe even 13 or 14 years and all of a sudden, God visits. God visits Abraham again. In verse 1, it says that it came to pass afterward, after these things, God did tempt Abraham. And stop there for a little teaching moment. We know as we study the Bible that God tempts no man with evil. Right? Right. Yeah. Amen. The word tempt there doesn't mean to tempt in the sense that God's trying to get him to do something wrong. He's trying to judge his heart to do something right. A better word inserted there would be to test. To test Abraham. Because truly when we consider the faithfulness of God in our life, the, the, the connection in that relationship has to be both ways. We cannot expect the blessing and the faithfulness of God to bless us if we're not faithful back. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said to Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And God said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and get into the land of Moriah, and offer him there the burnt offering unto one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. What, what a contradiction against the love and, and blessing of God, seemingly, that God would give us something in order to take it away. But when you look deeper into what God is revealing to us today as the faithful one is that God will always test our hearts to see if our hearts is right before Him. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon our heart. And God is testing the heart of Abraham. Isaac was the apple of his eye. Isaac was the blessing that came from God. It was the desire of his life to have a son. And God comes down and says, Will you be willing, Abraham, to give him back? Would you be willing, Abraham, to let go of that thing that, need, that is the nearest and dearest thing to your heart? And this is the word of God for us today. We need to say yes, Lord. Whatever it is that you have for my life, I say yes. Is there something in my heart, God, today that I need to let go of so I can prove my love for you, Lord? I am going to say yes, and I let it go today. Amen. He begins to speak to the heart of Isaac. He says, get into the mountain that I will show you thereof and offer Isaac a burnt offering there. Verse 3 says that Abraham rose up early in the morning, immediately, without second guessing, without doubting, without worrying about a thing. He saddled his donkey, he took his two young men with him, Isaac his son, and clayed the wood uh, and, uh, for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him of Moriah. Moriah, Mount Moriah. Wow, Mount Moriah. What a place, Mount Moriah. Glory to God, it's the place, the mountain of God, it's the place, amen, for the dome of the rock covers the rock that was going to sacrifice Isaac on, on that day. Mount Moriah, the place where the temple of God was built. Moriah has a lot of history, amen, a lot of spiritual experience on the temple mount, Moriah. And then verse 4 says, And then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place afar off. 
God when He begins to speak to our heart and reveal His faithfulness to our lives will always anoint us with vision to see beyond the moment. God wants you to know today that He wants to give you a fresh touch, fresh vision, a fresh anointing. As John said, God showed us to the church of Laodicea. God began to say, if you would ask of me, I would anoint your eyes with salve that you would see. Because you're blind and naked and miserable and poor. God looked upon the church and realized that sometimes we need to capture a fresh vision of who He is and what He does and what He wants. Do I have a witness in the house of God that can say amen today? God wants to give us a fresh vision of Himself today and reveal, amen, His destiny and plan for our life. The Bible says that Abraham saw the place afar off. We don't know how far it was and how distant it was, but he knew that that was the place that God was taking him. I wonder today, do you know the place that God is taking you to, that God is calling you out of that place of despondency, of hopelessness, of despair? God is saying, look up your eyes and see the destiny. Look to the destiny. The Lord said, look to the destiny that I have for you. You are not in a settled place. You are in a transferable place. I am taking you to a better He saw the place so far off. Notice that Abraham said to the young men in verse 5, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go and worship one, uh, will go up yonder and worship, and come again unto you. Don't pass this up, people of God. Don't pass this up, beloved. Look, look at what Abraham is saying. He's prophesying the heart of God in this very situation in which he has found himself. He has the wood, he has the knife, he has the fire, he has a mountain to get up onto, he has a place of sacrifice. He tells the two young men with the donkeys, you guys stay here. Me and Isaac, we're going to go up to the mountain, but we will come again. In his ears he heard that God said, you're going to sacrifice your son there. But in his heart of faith he heard, God is going to bring my son back to me.
Look at this. I am not going to allow myself to stay stuck. I have a prophetic promise over my life that I am going forward. That God has desired to call me to something greater. Something more. Hallelujah. So I'm moving forward. Say forward. I am moving forward. All right. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great prophetic act you just did. And God is going to reward you for it. There's a loosing. There's a loosing that just took place right there. I don't know how you feel about this. I don't know anything about this. But when you stand up, you make a move. Something moves in the atmosphere. And God begins to invade that space of faith. Hello, somebody. God just invaded your space of faith. When you just stood up and said, I'm not going to take that anymore. I'm not going to be stuck. You, you just made a prophetic declaration that God invaded and moved right into you. He saw what you just did, and he's going to move you out of that. Hallelujah. He's going to move you out of that place into something greater, something more. It's on the way. Hallelujah. God's intention for our lives is always ahead of us. His plan, his blessing, his provision is always ahead of us. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I better hurry up. I'm going to tell you right now that God is faithful. Amen. He is going to make a way for you. Amen. Amen. This is the reality. This is the revelation of God. He, Abraham said, we're going to come again. We're going to go up there. We're going to come again. Verse 6 says that Abraham took the wood, took the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they both went up together. And Isaac spoke to him to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold, you've got the fire and the wood. You've got, the, you've got all the things necessary, but where is the lamb for the offering? Notice. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb as a burnt offering. So they went up them, both of them together. Amen. I don't believe that, that Abraham was being deceitful. I don't believe that Abraham was lying to his son. I believe that Abraham was speaking out of a heart full of faith and knowing the faithfulness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He knew something, amen, that he did not see. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. And the evidence of things not seen. He amen. spoke something that he knew prophetically. He knew from the character of the faithfulness of God that somehow God was going to bring provision to his point of need. Hallelujah. He said, my son, our God will provide a sacrifice. He spoke it out prophetically. My God will provide a sacrifice a second time. Amen. Bringing emphasis to the truth and reality that God, amen, was going to be faithful to him. Yeah. First he said, me and the lad are coming back. Then he said, me, uh, God's going to provide a sacrifice in our time of need. Twice. Any time something is spoken twice in Scripture, it's for, the, it's for the purpose of emphasis. And the emphasis is not on me. The emphasis is not on Abraham. The emphasis is on God. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. It's always good to stay in communion with God. Amen. Amen. Always stay in a place of prayerfulness with God. Amen. Because the Spirit of the Lord will come and bring the validation of His reality. Hallelujah. The, the, the presence of the Lord will come wrap His arm around you in that altar time. And say, son, everything is going to be alright. The presence of God was on the top of the mountain before Abraham got there. The presence of God was with him as he tied the, the donkeys off. And the presence of God had filled Abraham up from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. He was a place of overflow. He was not placed in a place of despondency. He was a place of hope. He was a place of faith. He was a place of recognizing the faithfulness of God. God is faithful, church. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Amen. I feel so good right now that I can almost fall over and be slaying the spirit all by myself. <laughs> Glory to God. So we know God will test us. We know that, but we also know that God will secure us. Amen. Yeah. They get up to the top of the mountain and, and it says that Abraham built an altar there. The presence of God was all around him. He was speaking out prophetically about the return of, of him and Isaac coming back. He spoke up prophetically about how God was going to provide a sacrifice. They get up to the place. Sometimes God will take you to the very brink to test your heart. Yes. Hello, somebody. Amen. You can say amen or oh me, but some of us have been there. We know what it's like. Amen. Sometimes we just kind of feel like old Mother Hubbard that went to the cupboard and the cupboards were bare. 
Amen. You know, there's no food in the house and uh, no power. You know, the blackouts have happened and, and, and all of this stuff is going on and we're, we're wondering what is going on. But not Abraham. Abraham knew that God was faithful. He gets up to the top of the mountain and he begins to put the altar down there for, for laying his son on it. His son is, doesn't have any clue at this time. The son is a teenager. You know, he's 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. He's a teenager. I think he's a teenager. Abraham is 112 years old, probably, at this time. If, if we look at this in the natural, we think, well, you know, if I think really wanted to, you can probably do a reversal. <laughs> Use some of that Taekwondo or whatever you call that stuff. Jiu-Jitsu. And, 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 you know, put Dad on there instead. <laughs> turn the situation around. You know, turn the table. That's not what it says. I wonder sometimes if, you know, God's Word is awesome. Sometimes we think as parents, you know, they are a teenager, maybe that's no, I shouldn't say that. I, no, I won't even finish that statement. <laughs> so, notice, sometimes God will take us to the very brink to test our heart. It's really easy to shout the praise when everything is going good. Amen. But our, our value of praise is not so valuable as much as when everything is going good. It's always good to praise the Lord. But the true depth and value of your praise isn't found when everything is going good. The true depth and value of your praise is found when everything is going bad. Right. Amen. It's real easy for me to lift my hand and praise the Lord when things are going good. Amen. I can shout the praise, hallelujah, when my car starts in the morning and I've got four good tires and I've got gasoline in the car and I've got food on the table. I can shout real good, hallelujah, when, when the house is full and we've got people filling up the church. I can shout real good when all of everything that I consider good is happening to me. I can praise the Lord. But what about the reverse of things? What about when the tank is empty and the pirate is flat and the house is dark and there's no food on the table and you've been laid off of your job and all of these things are going wrong in your life. I just wonder if I have someone in the house of God right now that in that moment time of despair you can lift up your hands anyway and say I don't care what's going on in my life I'm going to lift my hands and praise the Lord because God is faithful. Amen. He got to the very brink. He lifted up the knife. He bound Isaac with rope. He laid him on the altar. He, he, he got ready to put, put the fire underneath of the wood. He lifts up the knife and the voice of God speaks again. Amen. Someone write that down and put that on Facebook. The voice of God speaks again. Amen. He'll speak to you. If he's not speaking to you right now, he'll speak to you. He's calling. He's constantly moving yeah. by His Spirit to speak to us, nudging us, speaking to us, encouraging us, helping us, assuring us, telling us it's going to be all right. I've got this covered. I'm going to make a way. Hold out. Hold on. Keep going. It is me. I am the great I am. I am. I am. I am. I am here. I am going to make a way. I will provide. Amen. Amen. He says, Abraham, Abraham, hurt not thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Abraham looks, and all of a sudden he sees a ram caught in the thicket, it says, with his horns in the briars and the bushes. All of a sudden, there's, there's, a, there's a transfer, there's a change, there, there's a way made. There's, there is a substitute there's a substitute. And Abraham recognizes it. And he calls that place Jehovah Jireh. The identity of God, Jehovah Jireh, simply means that my God will supply. Amen. Amen. That's what you need to take out of here today. In your heart. 
Whatever it is you're dealing with, you're wrestling with, you're troubled by, whatever it is that's going on in your life, you need to capture this and get it into your spirit that my God will supply. He's Jehovah Jireh. My God will supply. Breakthrough is on the way. Doors are opening. Help is coming. Help is on the way. The crooked place is going to be made straight. Those things that are, I'm being stumbled by are going to be made smooth because God is faithful and my God will supply. Yes. Hallelujah. The ram in the bush is a great symbolic. It was, it was physical and real, but in some ways very symbolic of what Jesus did for each and every one of us. Yes. When we were truly the one, we were the one that deserved to die. Just as Isaac was when called to die, a substitute was given. We deserve to die because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Amen. But God doesn't stop there in His Word. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God yes. is eternal life through Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord. Amen. And just as God sent that ram as a substitute for sacrifice, yeah. God the Father sent His Son as a substitute to become our sacrifice. So we can be in right relationship even today as Pastor Blair was praying again that prayer. Very simple. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash them away by your precious blood. He can do that for you today. My well, head's bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around. But are you here today and do you need a Savior? Do you need that substitute that God gave when He gave His only Son to die in my place, just as that ram died in Isaac's place? Do you need a Savior today? Do you need to know Jesus? You might be here today and you've never made a confession for Jesus to be your Savior. If that's you today, would you lift your hand up? I want to pray for you this morning. God bless your hand. Is there another today? I need to know Jesus as my Savior. Got one hand up. There. You might be here today. Two hands up. God bless you. Thank you. You might be here today and say, you know, Pastor, I did pray that prayer, but I need to get some things right with God. I believe the message that's been delivered today. I believe that God is faithful. And I haven't been faithful to Him, and I want to be. I need to rededicate my life. Pray for me. If that's you today, would you lift your hand up today? Very quickly, God bless your hand. Yes. And the ball of the church. You stand all around a servant of from the sanctuary with me this morning. Hallelujah. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the mouth confession is made, and with the heart we believe. So Father, right now, Lord, those that raise their hand and need to know you as their personal Savior, we ask that you would hear their prayer. As we pray this together, would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins. And you rose again on the third day. And you rose again on the third day. I accept that sacrifice. And I accept that sacrifice. As being a debt paid for me. As being a for me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Forgive me. Wash, me. Wash me. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. Today, I Today I confess. That you are my Savior. Are my Savior. Today I confess. Today that I walk in faith. And make you my Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord will say, I've come before you today bearing many gifts. The thing you've been looking for, the thing you need, I have placed on the altar before you now. If you will come and receive it, says the Lord. The altars are open. God is calling people to the altars. Amen. These altars are open. Amen. We'll meet you here. Hallelujah. Take time to pray.
These are come to the altars. Join them. Lay hands on them. Pray with them. Glory to God. Yeah.